Okay, Jonathan Hurd, there seems to be an interest in OTT here at the Media Summit. How about among your consulting clients? Oh, absolutely. So our clients are across the technology, media, telecom value chain. So we have clients who are video service providers, cable operators, phone companies, uh, et cetera, as well as um, some new entrants into the video space as well. So the fact that you can distribute content now over the public internet means that there's a lot more opportunity for new players to enter the market as well as existing players to um, think about new ways and new business models in terms of their the reach they can have, it, moving from a regional reach to a national reach, or offering much more content than they used to be able to when they were confined by a limited number of channels. So the um, OTT is affecting our uh, clients in many ways. We also work with video infrastructure providers, so many of them are asking uh, you know, we've been serving traditional video distribution. How do we change our product offers to be able to serve uh, those who are distributing video over the top? So for the same amount of bandwidth for, let's say, uh, cable vision industries, is it more cost effective for them to uh, put a common uh, a broadcast channel over it? or to use it for uh, digital, let's say, OTT channels? Well, alt internet protocol IP uh, delivery is uh, a lot more efficient throughout the entire video production cycle. You don't have to allocate a fixed amount of spectrum, whether it's spectrum in the air or spectrum on a, uh, on a wire to be able to transmit video. So when, you, when you're able to actually convert video to packets, it's a lot more effective. Now that's a bit different for OTT, generally refers to internet distributed over the public internet. And that creates both new opportunities, uh, in other words, being able to get video to other devices without the need of a set-top box, for example, uh, but it also creates challenges from a quality perspective. You have to make sure you have adequate bandwidth, uh, that you have adequate bit rate, your encoding and compression is something you have to manage. So it's a different set of technical challenges, but ultimately the fact that you're distributing packets rather than uh, using a, a fixed amount of spectrum does create new opportunities. How about the opportunity for building an OTT browser into a cable set-top box. It seems to have taken the cable operators a long time to go that way, but it seems that it would make a lot of sense to them. Uh, are we at that stage now? Well, that the whole idea of web TV has been around a long time. One of the major challenges or issues there is the user experience. So the way we navigate uh, around the World Wide Web on a laptop or on a um, on a mobile device, etc. You know, we're generally using a keyboard. Uh, we generally don't have you know like a full screen dedicated to video. So, bringing the web to TV is actually not as great as it might sound. A, if I don't have a keyboard, it's hard to find a particular page on the web. Uh, uh, B, the other thing is that the screen, the TV screen, is generally too far away and the resolution isn't high enough to be able to use it in the way I use other web browsing devices. But people are connecting their Roku, their Amazon Fire, their Google Chromecast to their TV sets anyway and watching it now. Roku is, has made it available as a, as a separate uh, device. Are the cable operators? Well, yes. Comcast, for example. Uh, and there, I just want to clarify, you're not talking about the web so much as you're talking about internet connectivity, right? Internet video. Yeah. So internet video, uh, Comcast has it integrated into their set-top box, just as one example. Others are doing it too. So with the same remote, uh, like a voice remote on X1, I can uh, name, I can say Stranger Things, and it will mention to me that, or tell me that that is available on Netflix, and then I could just go to Netflix and watch that by just clicking a button on the remote. So they, they are integrating 
um, internet delivered video onto the set top box. Now what's happening be behind the scenes there is a, a little bit different from going directly to the public internet in some cases, but uh, certainly that that's also is effectively what's going on from a user experience point of view. How about uh, Comcast's competition like Spectrum or Cablevision? They're all they're all getting there. I mean, the combination of using a voice remote and integrating internet video uh, services, the most popular one, obviously Netflix. Uh, they're all moving in that direction because you know they that's what consumers want, and it makes for a much better consumer experience. How about TiVo? What's how does their newest offering uh, bode for consumers? So. TiVo, yeah, obviously, is an interesting uh, past of uh, having both a direct-to-consumer model and an offer for consumers, but also integrated with uh, service providers. And you know, overall, the the thing that works really well with TiVo is that uh, they still have that powerful DVR capability, but also when they're married with a service provider, they can integrate uh, internet video as well as managed, you know, video, traditional video channels. 